Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Dope EV. And I want to tell you why I have not uploaded in the past few weeks. The reason is I've started college again for the fifth time. And uh, I'm across the state in a completely different city. Uh, than where my Starfighter X is right now. So at the moment, we're gonna go back in time and talk about things from three weeks ago. I'm gonna tell you all about this next week. My YouTube channel is shit. And that means that I've been trying to think of ways to improve my channel without better technology. Because technology is not my strong suit. Technology is expensive to the point of unaffordable. I cannot afford a fucking red. I'm not going to be able to afford a fucking Kira or a Mira. I'm never going to be able to afford like a motion tracking gimbal, right? I, I, I can't afford that technology. And I definitely can't afford to uh, keep looking at the camera the whole time that I'm talking to you. So I have to wear sunglasses because looking like this isn't very cinematic. How do I improve this channel without a fucking... I could start writing a script. This is the 1984 Firebird Trans Am and it is a thing of beauty. Firebird. Pontiac, we build excitement. Whoa! Another thing I realized that I might be able to start doing is, um, you know, looking more attractive. Or, you know, I could try to be more enigmatic. Come to the place where my mother used to live. Much busier than I remember. I could try to be more enigmatic and exciting and mysterious. In fact, right now, I'm standing in the exact spot where uh, my mother used to live, in that house right there. In fact, a lot has changed around here. Um, I used to spend one week at my father's and one week at my mother's and uh, it's changed a lot here in fact there are certainly a lot less trees here right now if there's a different paint job on this house but if if you can just see it's it's all gray it used to be a really ugly yellow color that trim used to be brown, so it it, it kind of looked like urine. That's, that's the only color that I can describe it. That room right there used to be my sister's bedroom. And cars would come along this street that I'm standing on right now, and they would pull up right here to this house, and they would buy dime bags of marijuana. At least that's the story that I heard. And where that orange cruiser is right now, I think that's what that is, um, used to be sitting a red 1980s Volkswagen Rabbit that belonged to my mother. And uh, it was a very reliable car. The suspension wasn't great. And the windshield wiper had broken a year and a half earlier. The edge of that uh, wiper uh, just dug in and carved a groove. 
And one day, <laughs> my sister, uh, one of my older sisters came home, saw the car and just totally, totally didn't want to deal with it anymore. She thought it was just a piece of shit. So she went into the back room, she grabbed a baseball bat, and she... It, it, you know, I, I liked that car. It was a decent car. Anyways, not the first car to be wrecked in my family. It ended up looking like nothing more than what an old car the fire brigade might use for practice winds up looking like after 10 hours under the jaws of life. But let's get back to the business of me trying to be more attractive for you guys. Do you see that guy on the right hand side, the guy stylishly tucking a pen into his jacket pocket, paying rapt attention to the Secretary of State? This guy? That is me. I used to be attractive, actually had abs, and was 180 pounds. Right now, not so much. I really need to do something to get back to my fighting weight. And by that, I mean losing this baggage. I've been carrying it around for quite a while, and it's quite annoying. <laughs> Alternatively, I can try to James May my way into an accurate car dialogue. That's not a good noise. See, the thing about a, a 2005 Ford Taurus is that it is definitely a mechanic's car. And what I mean by that is that it's a, a lot harder to fix simple problems on this car than it would be on something made in the 80s. The spark plugs, in order to replace them, you need to take off the air intake manifold and about seven billion wires just to make sure that you don't kill yourself and in the process when you replace your spark plugs you need to put everything back in the right place and to make sure that none of the hoses or wires that you took off while getting to those spark plugs are loose because that will cause more problems but I think we need to accept the ultimate fact that this is a build show and you want to see me building shit. Right now, I just don't have anything to show you. So, I'll see you later. Welcome to next week. This is an electric vehicle charger on the grounds of Central Washington University right outside the greenhouse. How appropriate. But there is one problem with this electric vehicle charger, and it's that sign right there. It says staff only. And what that means is that no student can charge their electric vehicle right here. The other problem, it is not a fast charger. What are we going to do to rectify this situation? We only have 12 years to save the fucking planet. 12 fucking years. That's not enough time. That's not enough time for governments to get their shit together. So we gotta do it for them. We have to be the actors in society. And the actions that we have proposed here at Central Washington University on this campus are going to do just that. Interdisciplinary projects to create a better society and to save the fucking planet from human extinction. 
We are rebelling against human extinction. It's time we act. My plan for growing the channel, okay, uh, I have slightly shifted gears. I have also become uh, the acting president of the electric vehicle club out here. So I'm in a big pit right now in the middle of a place called the Cirque, the Student Union and Recreation Center at Central Washington University. In a few minutes, right over there, the student government is about to meet. And the idea of having a student government meeting out here in the open, as opposed to like in a conference room like at every single other university I've attended. Remember, this is the fifth college I've been to. This is, this is different, you know? This is a different experience. Everyone's walking by, you know? People are walking by to go to the student store, to get their textbooks, to get coffee, smoothies, pizza, and this sort of experience is, I think, it's greatly advantageous for the university to openly display everything it has to say. There's no closed sessions, there's no backroom dealings, there's, it's, everything's right in front of you. And if, if a student is even vaguely interested in, in what student government might be, and they're walking by on their way to a class, or to a dance recital, and they just happen to stand for five minutes and listen, wow, you know, that, that person might have been exposed to something that one day will become a career. And if not for this pit, and if not for the student government meeting in the middle of, of everything, the chaos, it wouldn't happen. So let me ask you a question. How many student governments did you go to when you were in college? How many government meetings have you been to as a citizen? What if they were all in pits like this? What if instead of having to go to some dank basement in City Hall to talk about your water, what if you had it right on the steps? What if you had it in the middle of the most chaotic and hectic place in your city? And what if, for some magical reason, you could actually hear each other talk? Good afternoon, Wildcats. Uh, I would like to call this meeting to order for the ASCWU uh, public meetings at 103. So we'll start with uh, introductions. My name is Alejandro Alcantar and I am the Executive Vice President.
Oh god, I don't want Um, since I'm supposed to be documenting the development, let's wipe that off, <laughs> of the Electric Vehicle Club and its inner workings on, I don't have my tripod. That's okay. Like, here, maybe. Here, over here.